Directed by Jeff Chan, Code Eight Part Two, starring Robbie Amell and Stephen Amell in the lead roles, is about to be released pretty soon. As the Canadian science fiction action film is releasing soon, we thought this would be the perfect time to give you an overview of the franchise so far, so that you can have a hassle-free viewing experience. A spoiler warning is in order, as we will be discussing essential plot points and character details from the movie. But if you are done watching it already, let's dive straight into the video. And yeah, while you're at it, please like the video and subscribe to our channel. It helps us a lot thank you and let's move on in the early 20th century the public became aware of the existence of people with superhuman abilities called powers leading the government to pass a law requiring all power users to register their abilities they are quickly becoming a key part of the economy notably in the construction of lincoln city as the city of tomorrow as the second industrial revolution begins the power users are marginalized in the face of increasing mechanization leading to severe prejudice as they become second class citizens in the 1990s a crime syndicate called the trust flooded the streets with an addictive drug called psych made from the spinal fluid of desperate or traffic powers police departments are beginning to use advanced drones called guardians and facial recognition software to combat power related crime amid debate over a citywide ban on the gifted then we get introduced to Connor Reed, a 26-year-old class 5 electric who has electrokinetic powers and cares for his mother Mary, a cryo or cryokinetic power user, who suffers from brain cancer that sometimes causes her abilities to function irregularly. As they belong to the power section, they can't afford the care she needs. Connor makes ends meet by working as an unregistered day laborer alongside several other power users, using his skills to install unprotected electrical cables. While they are walking, the police arrive and order the work to disband and a pyro or pyrokinetic power user is killed while he tries to escape arrest. Elsewhere in the city, detectives Park and Davies conduct a drug raid on an apartment complex owned by crime lord Marcus Sutcliffe, a local trust agent and a reader or telepathic power user. Nearly one million worth of products are seized bringing Sutcliffe into conflict with Wesley Combo, his superior at the trust, who demands the cut is expected within a week. Reed is approached by Gary Sutcliffe's a subordinate and a TK or telekinetic power user and his team for a job. Despite warnings from a colleague, Reed goes with them and participates in a chemical theft by short-circuiting the electric fence in a stunning show of his powers. Reed is introduced to Sutcliffe and meets Nia, Sutcliffe's supposed girlfriend. Park and Davies arrive on the scene the next day and determine that Sutcliffe is using the chemicals that were stolen to cut his remaining product, indicating his desperate for revenue. Garrett recruits Reed, recognizing that he has untapped potential and agrees to help him earn enough money to pay for his mother's treatment. He begins training Reed to gain the full use of his abilities and uses him as an enforcer in the psych trade. Reed also becomes close to members of Garrett's crew, including Freddy, a mute brawn with superpower, and Maddie Garrett's girlfriend, and a pyro. Sutcliffe asks the crew to rob a bank to repay the trust, but the safe only contains $50,000. Combo's shape shifter assassin Copperhead tries to kill Sutcliffe for defaulting on his debt, but Sutcliffe's bodyguard Rhino, a brawn with bulletproof skin, manages to kill her. Reed is injured in the fight and Nia reveals that she is a healer as she only stays with Sutcliffe to ease the effects of his psych addiction and pay off her debt. Reed's mother confronts him about the amount of money he made working with the crew. Suddenly, she has convulsions and Reed rushes her to the hospital where the doctor tells him they will have to operate soon to remove her tumor. In the meantime, Park and Davis interrogate Reed and encourage him to cooperate as they have already seized most of the sites on the streets, weakening Sutcliffe's influence. Davis advises the plan evidence in order to coerce Reed into informing while Park is adamant that they cut him loose due to lack of evidence. Reed is soon released and goes to Garrett to propose raiding the plant Psychron, the monthly shipment of confiscated drugs for destruction, which will be worth around $10 million. Garrett and Reed bring the Aja to Sutcliffe where Reed demands for Nia to heal his mother as payment and Garrett stipulates he will become a partner in running the psych creed. On the day of the heist, the crew crashes the truck while it is in a no-fly zone, preventing the drones carrying the Guardians from getting there as backup. Reed shuts down the truck's electronics and they manage to destroy the Guardians. As Maddie delivers the psych to Rhino, Sutcliffe's men execute the officers protecting the truck and turn on the crew, killing Maddie and mortally wounding Freddy before he, Garrett and Reed manage to escape. Rhino escapes with the drugs while the drone pilot ignores the no-fly zone and drops more Guardians into the area, killing the rest 
first of Sutcliffe's men. Freddy dies as Reed and Garrett leave. Reed blames Garrett that Sutcliffe betrayed him because of Garrett's demands, and they part ways. Davison Park's captain is angry that Reed was not arrested before the robbery and demands that they bring those responsible for the mayhem to justice. Park visits his daughter, a TK Power user, who is afraid that she will be given away because she has difficulty controlling her abilities. Reed contacts Park and offers the location of Sutcliffe's hideout. The police raid Sutcliffe's hideout where Reed and Garrett seek revenge on him at his escape route. After killing Rhino and Sutcliffe, Garrett takes the psych and encourages Reed to force Nia to heal his mother. Nia begs Reed to let her go as her abilities not only heal people but also force her to take the injury or illness upon herself, meaning she could die trying to heal his mother. Reed takes Nia to the hospital at gunpoint but ultimately tells her to stop when he sees how painful the process is for her. In the end, Reed cheerfully says goodbye to his mother before she dies. Reed then goes to the police station and gives Nia his truck to leave town. He decides to turn himself in to try to make up for his mistakes. Garrett delivers the psych to Combo and takes over the drug trafficking business for the trust in Lincoln City. Reed visits his mother's grave before serving his sentence while Nia has a tearful visit with her father in prison, whose debt she was repaying to Sutcliffe. Meanwhile, the powers ban is being voted on due to the heist while Park reluctantly accepts an award for the raid against Sutcliffe. Though the film offers nothing new to the genre, I'm still waiting for the sequel as it might be a fresh take and might have better world building contrary to its predecessor. Code 8 Part 2 is set to be released on Netflix on February 28, 2024. Hey hey hey, thank you for watching this video. Do share your thoughts in the comment section about your expectations regarding Code 8 Part 2. Hit the like button and subscribe to our channel to get your weekly dose of cinema series. See you at the next one and for the timing we are signing off. Cheerio and I'll be back.